brings understanding to the simple. Even as you're about listening to this message by the man of God, we hope that the light of God's word will be shed abroad in your heart. You will know what to do and you will know how to live. And so if you're new to this channel, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this message. Also go to the comment section and comment whatever you have learned. Share this message abroad because we won't always be a blessing to the world. Thank you. So coming with the new birth, coming with the new birth, and who we are in Christ is also what we are in Christ. Coming with the new birth and with who we are in Christ is also what we are in Christ. We are the vessels of the knowledge of Christ everywhere. So salvation comes with a responsibility. Oh yes, you have done everything. Everything as a believer. You have received all that Christ has provided. And you know sometimes people say, Christ has done it all. Yes, Christ has done it all in the context of the fulfillment of the prophecies of scripture. Christ has done it all in the context of the fulfillment of the prophecies of scriptures. Christ has done it all where the payment of the price for sin is concerned. All right, please, that's important because sometimes people quote that statement out of context. He has done it all. He has done everything. It is called finished work, not just finished work. It is finished work in the context of the fulfillment of the prophecies of the Old Testament. Now, Jesus having done everything, has now given unto us the responsibility to make manifest that knowledge in every place. Having done everything, he has now given to us the responsibility to manifest that knowledge in every place. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Please stay with me. Mark chapter 16, verse number 15. And he said unto them, this was after he rose from the dead. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This was after he rose from the dead. Which means there is the finished work of Christ. There is the ongoing work of Christ. There is the unfinished work of Christ. There is the finished work of Christ. There is the ongoing work of Christ. There is the unfinished work of Christ. The finished work of Christ is what Jesus did in his death, burial, and resurrection. The ongoing work of Christ is we making manifest the savor of his knowledge everywhere. Are we still in the building? Making manifest the savor of his knowledge everywhere. When Jesus rose from the dead, he taught the disciples in Luke 24. In Luke 24, 25 to 27, we have the full account. Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. In Luke 24, 44 to 46. Luke 24, 44 to 46. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Next verse. Then opened it their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Next verse. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoove Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Verse 47 now. And that repentance, repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So you are the trophy of his resurrection, but along with that comes a responsibility of you making manifest the savor of his knowledge in every place. So he now turns to them after showing them what he has done and tells them what they should do. I cannot name Jesus any more a savior than he is. 
I cannot name Jesus any more Lord than he is. Because sometimes you hear people sing, lift up Jesus. Lift up Jesus. We can't lift him any more than he's lifted. He is king of kings. We crown him, crown, we crown him. No, something is wrong with that thinking pattern. We don't crown him. He crowns us. It is called the judgment seat of Christ. Where he will give us rewards. The crown of life, the crown of righteousness. Metaphorically, the reward for service. Are we in the building? So I can't make him any more than he is. So he now turns to the folks that were with him and he said to them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now the word the gospel, the word the gospel is taken from a simple word which means good news. Good news. The word gospel simply means good news. He just told them he rose from the dead. He just told them he is triumphant over the devil. He just told them he has risen from the dead. He now turns to them and tells them to go and preach the good news to every creature. The good news of what he has just done. The good news of what he has just provided for them. You now go to every creature and share with them the good news. So what will that good news be? The good news will be what he told them he has just done. The good news will be what he has just told them, he has done. Which is what we call the gospel. Are you still in the building? That is what we call the gospel. He now says unto them, tell them what I have done. Not tell them what they have done. Don't go and tell them what they are doing. Go and tell them what I have done. I did it because of what they have done. I did it because of what they are doing. So evangelism it's not revealing to man his state. Evangelism is revealing to man what Christ has done for him. Go and tell them, go and tell them, Jesus died for sinful man. Go and tell them, go and tell them, he is risen from the dead. Go and tell them. Not go and tell them their sins. Not go and tell them how useless they are. Not go and tell them how doomed they are. That's not evangelism. Evangelism is to go and tell them what Christ has done. Are we in the building? What Christ has done. That's the good news. The good news is what Christ has done. Not what they are doing. What he has done. Once again, Mark 16, 15. Stay with me. Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Next verse. He that believeth, please pay attention, and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And sometimes, you know, we go to preach and we condemn people to make them believe. You didn't hear that. We condemn people to make them believe. What, but what does he say? He that believeth shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. So you are not damned until you believe not. So instead of telling people how damned they are, tell them what Christ has done. They are only damned if they believe not after you preach. So damnation is not a part of the message. Damnation is not a part of the message. Matthew 28, 18. Please stay with me. Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Next verse. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Next verse. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all the way, even unto the end of the world. On our platform, kindly hit 
the subscribe button if you are new here. And also like this message for us. Do well to comment in the comment section because we want to know what you learned and where you're watching us from. Thank you, message community.